Hi there, my name is Jason Harlow. Welcome to Lesson 5 in my Introduction to Physics Primer. Uh, today's lesson, we're just going to go through the four equations for constant acceleration. And so I'll just list them first. X is x initial plus uh, v initial plus v over 2 times t. Uh, the second one is v equals v initial plus at. The third one is x equals x initial plus v initial times t plus 1 half at squared. And the fourth one is v squared equals the initial v squared plus 2a times x minus x initial. And so the idea is that these equations, if you know that uh, acceleration is constant, then you can use one of these equations to solve for an unknown. So with this video, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, derive the first equation, then I'll do an example of it. Then I'll derive the second equation, do an example, and go back and forth like that for all four equations. And uh, when it comes to the end, I'm going to discuss a little bit about how to use those equations and uh, discuss what good problem-solving steps are. Okay, equations for constant acceleration. So the idea here is that you have an object that moves along the x-axis with some constant acceleration a. And the initial conditions for that object is that at time t equals 0, x equals x sub 0, and v equals v sub 0. And finally, at some later time, t, the object has a position, x, and it has a velocity, v. We won't use the final, or the little sub f's for these. So the elapsed time, delta t, is just t. The displacement, delta x, is x minus x sub 0. And the change in velocity, delta v, is v minus v sub 0. So the first equation of constant acceleration will just use the definition of average velocity, which was v bar is delta x over delta t. So with our notation, that's x minus x sub 0 over t. So rearranging that, v bar t equals x minus x sub 0, and x equals x sub 0 plus v bar times t. Now note that when a is a constant, this average velocity is exactly halfway between the initial velocity and the final velocity. v bar is v sub 0 plus v over 2. So taking that equation and that equation and combining them, we get x is x sub 0 plus v sub 0 plus v over 2 times t. And that's the first equation of constant acceleration. Okay, so let's do an example using the first equation of constant acceleration. A Ducati motorcycle can go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3 seconds. Assuming constant acceleration, how far does it travel in this time? And note that 1 mile is 1600 meters. Okay, so first, let's convert to SI units. So we've got uh, V is 60 miles per hour. So the first thing I'll multiply is something with meters in the top, miles in the bottom. And we know that 1 mile is 1600 meters. Then I'm going to multiply by something with hours in the top and seconds on the bottom. That's 1 over 3600. Miles cancels miles. Hours cancels hours. And we end up with meters and seconds, meters per second. So in my calculator, 26.667 meters per second. Uh, initial velocity is 0. Uh, the time is 3 seconds. That's the elapsed time. And we're going to set the initial position to be 0 and solve for the final position, x. And using equation 1, so x is the initial position 0 plus the initial velocity 0 plus the final velocity 26.667 divided by 2 times the time 3 seconds. Plugging into my calculator, I get 40 meters. Okay, let's derive the second equation for constant acceleration. And to start, we're going to use uh, the definition of, of average acceleration, which is a bar is equal to delta v divided by delta t. And our, our notation, that's v minus v sub 0 over t. And let's note that when uh, acceleration is constant, a equals the average acceleration. So you can rewrite this as a equals v over v sub 0 uh, divided by t. Multiply both sides by t, you get at equals v minus v sub 0. And rearranging, you get v equals v sub 0 plus at. And that's the second equation for constant acceleration. Okay, so let's do an example using the second equation for constant acceleration. The maximum acceleration of your car is a quarter g. A equals 9.8 meters per second squared divided by 4 equals 
2.45 meters per second squared. If you're driving at 50 kilometers per hour, what is the minimum time required to accelerate up to 120 kilometers per hour? Okay, so first let's convert to SI units. So the 50 kilometers per hour initial speed, uh, it, you're going to multiply by something with meters in the top, kilometers in the bottom, so that's uh, 1,000 over 1. Then you're going to multiply by something with hours in the top, seconds in the bottom, that's 1 over 3,600. So your kilometers cancels with your kilometers, your hours cancels with your hours, you end up with meters per second. Plugging into my calculator, I get 13.889 meters per second. That's initial. Your final velocity is 120 kilometers per hour. Again, multiply by 1,000 meters over 1 kilometer, multiply by uh, 1 hour over 3,600 seconds. In my calculator, I get 33.333 meters per second. Okay, so we're going to use uh, <coughs> the minimum time to change velocity will be when your acceleration is maximum. So A equals 2.45 meters per second squared. And we'll use uh, equation 2, V equals V sub 0 plus AT, but now we're going to have to solve out for T, which is what we want to find. So AT equals V minus V sub 0, uh, T equals V, sub v minus V sub 0 over A. So that's going to be 33.33, your final minus your initial, uh, divided by 2.45 uh, equals 7.9 seconds. Okay, so let's derive the third equation for constant acceleration, and we will recall the first two equations for constant acceleration. Equation 1 and equation 2. So let's uh, start, let's eliminate v by plugging 2 into 1. So we take this equation and we're going to plug it in to the v right there, and then that way there won't be any more v. So x equals x sub 0 plus v sub 0 plus, and now we put in v sub 0 plus at instead of v. And that's all divided by 2 and multiplied by t. So first thing is that there's 2 uh, v sub 0 there, so 2 v sub 0 uh, plus at. And then all of that is going to be multiplied by t over 2. And now there's a x0, and the first term is going to be 2 uh, divided by 2 is just uh, v sub 0 times t plus 1 half at squared. So there we have the third equation for constant acceleration. Okay, so let's do an example of using the third equation of constant acceleration. A car rolls down a hill with an initial velocity of v equals plus 10 meters per second, and a constant acceleration of a equals 1.5 meters per second squared. How far does it roll in 5 seconds? So let's draw a picture. Uh, there's a car and a hill. It starts at x equals 0. It goes a distance x, uh, and its initial speed is plus 10 meters per second, and its acceleration is plus 1.5 meters per second squared. And we need to find x, how far it rolls. And uh, we know that t equals 5 seconds, right? So let's use uh, equation 3. And there it is. Uh, so x sub 0 is 0. Uh, initial v is 10 times 5 seconds plus 1 half times the 1.5 times 5 squared. So 10 times 5 is 50. Uh, all this into my calculator, I got 18.75. And sum those up, and I got x equals 69 meters. Okay, so let's derive the fourth and the last equation for constant acceleration. Again, we will recall the first two equations for constant acceleration. And first, let's solve 2 uh, for t. So uh, we take uh, v0, subtract it from the other side. This implies that t is v minus v0 over a. And next, we'll eliminate t by plugging this into equation 1. So here's the equation for t. We're going to take it and plug it in right there into equation 1. So we have x equals x sub 0 plus uh, it's v 0 plus v over 2 times t, where t is v minus v sub 0 over a. So first thing we'll do, there's a x 0, and then we'll take out a factor of 1 over 2a and then multiply by v0 plus v, and then multiply by v minus v sub 0. So uh, this is 1 over 
a and then this actually is just v squared minus v sub zero squared if you multiply out these two brackets now let's solve for v squared so first let's uh, subtract x sub zero from the other side and it's one over uh, 2a times v squared minus v zero squared and then multiply both sides by uh, 2a so uh, equals v squared minus v squared then solve for v squared v squared equals v sub zero squared uh, plus 2a x minus x sub zero and that is the fourth equation of constant acceleration okay let's do an example of this fourth equation a ducati motorcycle starts from rest and accelerates at 8.9 meters per second squared how fast is it going when it has traveled 100 meters okay so let's draw the motorcycle and positive towards the right uh, initial velocity is zero it starts at rest there's the acceleration 8.9 uh, the distance it travels x minus x sub zero is 100 meters and we're asked for that final speed v so let's use equation for v squared equals v zero squared plus two a and then times the distance plugging in v zero squared is zero two times 8.9 times 100 meters plugging that into my calculator i get v squared is 1780 Square root of 1,780 equals 42.190 meters per second, and I'll round that off to 42. So that's the answer. Let's check to see if that makes sense. So what is this in kilometers per hour? Well, 42 meters per second. I'm going to multiply by something to convert to kilometers. Kilometers in the top, meters in the bottom. That's 1 over 1,000 and then uh, convert to hour per hour uh, multiply by 3600 seconds divided by one hour meters cancels meters uh, seconds cancels seconds and I'll get kilometers per hour plugging that into my calculator I got 152 kilometers per hour so that's very fast but I guess it's a, it's a Ducati motorcycle so it's not not absurdly fast it's not like 150 million kilometers per hour so I think we are good okay so to recap Here's a list of the four equations for constant acceleration. And I'll note uh, an interesting thing about each equation. Each equation actually does not contain uh, one of the main variables. So for example, if you look at this first equation, it does not contain A, the acceleration. However, we, uh, we have to know, in order to use this equation, we must know that, that acceleration is constant, otherwise, this term would not be the average velocity. Uh, equation two does not contain the position x. Uh, equation three does not contain v, the, uh, the final velocity. Uh, equation four uh, does not contain time. So your strategy uh, when choosing one of these equations is figure out which of these variables you don't know and you don't care about. It's not uh, known and it's not the unknown you're trying to find and so you can then use the equation which doesn't contain it. So lastly, uh, I want to just talk quickly about problem solving steps and I'll list uh, six steps that you can often use to solve uh, physics problems, especially these kinematics problems. So step one is draw a diagram. A simple sketch doesn't have to be really artistic uh, or, uh, or very detailed, but the main, the idea is you're trying to uh, by drawing the sketch is just get the concepts down on paper to get you started and it's a good idea to decide what direction is positive and note that on your sketch step two make a list of what is given in the problem these are your knowns and sometimes it's very uh, very straightforward the numbers are given sometimes uh, it uses words in the problem like it says uh, stopped that would mean that the velocity is zero. If it's initially stopped, that would mean v initial is zero. Or if something comes to rest, it means that v final is zero. Step three is identify exactly what the question is asking for. So what needs to be determined? This would, this, these would be your unknowns. Step four is to look, uh, look for an equation or set of equations that can help you solve the problem. And step five is to, to solve it. So you convert I, you know your knowns to SI units plug these into the appropriate equations and solve the problem so this step five is is usually you know 
<clears throat> the real sort of meat of the problem. And then step six is to assess. So check to see, is your answer reasonable? Does it make sense? And if not, then maybe, maybe there was a mistake uh, above.